Last time I showed you this, the best value standalone ECU out there, the Speedwino. But I also said this, I'm not gonna go through every stage of how to build a Speedwino, because really it's a lot of soldering. Well this time we are gonna do detail and I'm gonna build one start to finish and run my engine with it. Let me show you how. Welcome to Making for Motorsports, where we make more, spend less, and go faster. So, last video, well, this happened. So that video blew up a little bit, and that's fantastic. So if you watched, subscribed, liked, commented, thank you very much, it really does help and you've definitely inspired me to keep making these videos. So this video is about demystifying the build process and making sure people understand it's not that tricky. But do you have any concerns about doing a project like this? Is it the wiring? Is it the hardware? What components to use? The software? Please put comments in the well, comments. And if you've got, if you've done this and you found it easy, then please put that in as well because it really encourages people when they know others have had lots of success. But let's get into it. So I'm going to build a Speedwino from scratch. I'm gonna solder it, I'm gonna load the firmware, I'm gonna configure it, then I'm gonna put it on my car and I'm going to run it. And I'm gonna do all this against the clock so you can tell exactly how long this process takes. Let's get started. So first step is just to do a load of soldering. It's really not that hard. I am not an expert in soldering. In fact, uh, there it is on the list of things I'm not an expert at. And really, if you've got even the slightest amount of hand-eye coordination, 30 seconds to spare, you can get good enough at soldering to do this. It really isn't that hard. Okay guys, before we get too far into the soldering, a quick health and safety warning, soldering irons do get hot. So it's important to stay hydrated throughout the whole job and into the evening as well if required and something about fumes but yeah, try not to breathe them it'll be fine the key here is to be methodical print off your bill of materials that's got the key that tells you the part numbers and where they go on the board and open one bag of components at a time put them all on the board and solder them in before you open the next bag if you get the resistors mixed up, it's going to be a real headache to sort out which is which. So watching the first video back, one thing I don't think I emphasized enough was that this is a DIY project. Yes, you can buy the plug and plays and they're an option, but if you're gonna solder it in or you're gonna put together on a non-standard install, then it's DIY. And that means do it yourself. And the first stage in this, read the manual. And then if you've read the manual and you're not quite sure, read the manual again. And if you're still stuck, then go read Mega Manual. That was done for the Mega Squirt. So although the hardware is different, the concepts are very similar as are the components out in the engine bay. So on assembly, there's a couple of things that might trip you up. First off, there's a lot of header pins that they need soldering into the board to communicate with the Arduino. Do as I've done, install them to the Arduino first, put the board and Arduino together and then solder them. That way you know that everything's lined up and perpendicular, which is very hard to do holding them by hand. Trust me, I know. The other easy mistake to make is polarized components. So obviously all the diodes have to go the right way around, but that's obvious from the printing on the board. One less obvious are two capacitors. So check out the manual all the answers are there so if you're running vr sensors they're the two wire sensors for crank and cam position then you need one of these a vr conditioner so the vr conditioner formats the signal so the ecu can easily read it and they're the most important signals so just do the job properly buy one of these they're not very expensive and they're very easy to use that's it so assuming you've got everything in the right place, that's the last time you need the soldering iron. So 
Next job to do, load the firmware. So it took a few hours, but all the soldering is done, the board is all assembled. So the main job now is to load the firmware onto the Arduino itself. So before we do that, just a quick word of warning, this is a, a cheap and nasty one I bought just to do some prototyping with, and you can, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a 12 megahertz clock crystal. Whereas what you really want and need for this is a 16 megahertz. So make sure, don't go as cheap as possible. I bought this one, an Elegoo, it's the same as I've got in my other Speedwino, uh, but make sure you get one that's full fat, 16 megahertz, because you're gonna need the speed. So next thing to do, so let's load the firmware. So first job is you head over to speedwino.com. I'll put all the links in the description so you can go straight there. Support, downloads, and you've got speedy loader. So then pick your poison. I'm on 64-bit, and it'll start downloading. But using the magic of editing, we can shortcut this process and do this. And there we have it. So, it's open. Uh, we've got different firmwares we can pick, so I'm gonna go for the most recent. Then we get the Arduino and we plug it in. Go to choose port, refresh, there you go, and hit upload. So, it's doing the do. Quick thing, it's worth looking at. Speedwino is volunteer run, it's extraordinarily great value, so if you get good value out of this at home, consider donating. I can tell you that seeing as my Speedwino video has been my most popular, I will be donating too. You'll see making for motorsport here very soon. Right then. So as it says, we have now completed the download the upload successfully. So we can click exit. We can unplug and there's nothing left to do but combine the board and the Arduino and it is no longer an Arduino just be careful to get everything in it carefully carefully it is now a Speedwino <laughs> <laughs> it's alive. <laughs> so now we've got ourselves a Speedwino, we need to configure it. And the first step in that is setting the physical configuration of the board. So, how do we know what to do? Well, we look at the manual. So, it's all on the website. And because we're on version 3 series board, we're going to click there. And we scroll down to jumper configuration. So first one, JP1. This sets whether the ignition outputs are 5 or 12 volts. So, 12 volts for me, because I'm running a 12 volt ignition driver. If you are running logic level coils smart coils they often run off five volts but you're going to need to check it's going to be different for each one next one jp2 whether or not the crank input should be routed via the optional vr conditioner so we've fitted that so i'm i want to route my crank input via the vr conditioner so i'm going to say jp vr and it's just written on there. The signal comes in the middle pin, so you put the jumper over to the next right one. So 
I'm going with VR on JP2. JP3 is the cam input. I don't have one of those at the moment, but I'm going to put one on to VR anyway, just because I'm here, I can do it. And JP4 is whether we need a 10K pull-up resistor. Well, we're not using a hall resistor, so we don't really need that. And the same goes for JP4. So we can leave JP4 and JP5, sorry, completely empty. And that's our board physically configured. So the next thing to do is to fire up Tuna Studio and do all the software configuration. So we're gonna start from an absolute fresh install here. So I'm gonna click new project. And bring over. I'm gonna show, call it demo. And then I'm going to plug it in. Plug in the Speedwino. You hear the noise and then I'm going to click detect and it's going to search for what's a attached so it's found Speedwino it's found the right uh, version so I'll accept that it's put the firmware it knows what it's doing so I can put a description here if I want I'm not going to and then we're straight into the configuration so AFR I'm going to keep change the Celsius yep that's all good for me. Everything's successful, everything's talking. Default dashboard. And there we have it. We have, we are connected. So I recorded the full configuration of the Speedwino in Tuna Studio. You can see it in the bottom corner, the clock is still ticking and I explained everything, but in reality, it wasn't as good as the manual. So I'll show it you here. There is a whole section for configuring Tuna Studio and you can see there's a page for every major menu. So a more complicated one like engine constants, well, it's all there, gives you all what all the options mean and even a handy tip which i fell foul of if you need setup data starting information such as injector characteristics well you've got here some numbers that will get you running if you need something a bit more technical like a density curve for intake air temperature well there it is so again read the manual lots of great information in there and there you have it all configured ready to get wired into the car let's do it so because i'm not sure what car this is going to end up on it's a bit of a demonstration i just want to get it onto the mini to show you i'm throwing this new speedwino into the existing enclosure and little mini enclosure loom that I've got. It's all the same, so I can just wire it straight in. Um, and, but realistically, no matter what you're doing, unless it's a plug and play unit, this is gonna take you a fair amount of time and is worth planning for. So get hold of wiring diagrams, do all the research you can ahead of time, and then the whole process will go a lot smoother. Um, it will take a fair amount of time, but it's all part of understanding your install and your car. So there you have it. One wide in Speedwino. Let's get it on the car. Okay, so now we've got the new Speedwino hooked in. We do a couple of little tests. So first off, I just want to make sure that the fuel pump primes. There we go. Okay, so that all works. Then we're gonna fire, fire up Tuna Studio. Select Demo, which is the project we're working on. Plug it in. There goes the fuel pump again, excellent. 
So first off, we're going to look at some of the gauges, make sure everything makes sense. So engine map, about right. Throttle position all over the place, we'll come back to that. Temperature sensors, right, these don't look right. It's about 20 degrees. Um, they should be right. It looks like I need to um, go in and use the calibrate function, but they shouldn't stop the car running. And hey, we're against a clock here. So what we do need to do is calibrate the TPS. So it's a simple two-step process. You give it a closed throttle. So that's closed throttle and say get current and then give it wide open, full throttle, get current. So you can see there's not much of a difference between there. Um, might need to look at the TPS, the throttle position sensor, maybe change that. But for now, we can accept that. And like that, the TPS is making sense. Oh, one other thing for anyone who is doubting me, that's the old speed we know right there, including the fly leads for the Bluetooth sensor. So the only thing left to do is start it. Look at that started first flick so that was with a tune I've already got and already know so a bit of a shortcut there but hardware straight off the hop bang on I wasn't worried back to the studio so that's it in under four hours we've gone from a box of components to a working standalone ECU running a car engine Yes, some installs might be more complicated or you might not have clear information on injectors and trigger angle and everything, but that's all part of the process and getting to know your engine. But I'm very confident that if you know your components in your engine bay and you know your car engine, then you too could get a Speedwino up and running on your car very quickly. So if you're still watching now, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button, it really does help. And if you've enjoyed this or this is your kind of topic, then hit subscribe because we've got plenty more videos planned. But that's it from me. So until next time, read the manual. <laughs>